Fancy perfumey after. Back at Sam's Town, and that man trails by seven pins in the fourth. But we know he's very explosive, can strike at any time. But not this time. Kind of leaves a mixing eight pin. The pins kind of fell funny that time. Boy, they sure did. And uh, you can see that he's a little disgruntled. Thought he threw a pretty good shot there. And the eight pin just uh, stood solid. Never even thought about going down. Well, uh, relatively easy spare. Shoot that off your strike line, Mike? I do, yes. And he is, too. Now, both players have kind of settled in here in this match and uh, neither's given or taken a whole lot it's a seven pin ball game at this point actually though sam Sell, even though he trails at this point in the match looks steadier to me he's around the pocket where ian is uh, still a little shaky right now and that thumb hole he still hasn't got that tape right maybe he had a chance to play with it a little bit in between frames sam Sell defeated randy scharf in the semi-final game 200 to 191 to get to the championship here Trips that four out of there, that soft speed. See that soft speed, that two pin goes to the wall and comes back and gets that four. Billy Hardwick used to do that all the time. Mm -hmm. That's why he's in the PBA Hall of Fame. Now working down in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm sure he's probably watching this afternoon. He used to like to bowl for the big dollars. He sure did. Darrell very deliberate until he gets up on the approach. And once he gets up there, he sets himself pretty well. I like his arm swing. Watch his arm swing here, Dan. Very free. A little erratic right there as that five pin falls late. Oh, my, my, my. And uh, Daryl, I think, has used up, what, about five or six lives already here? Well, you can't say he's not getting the breaks as the ball goes to the Brooklyn side. And I think that's the head pin that comes back and gets that nine pin right there. Daryl thinks it's the head pin as well, and he's going, I know I can't throw it any worse than that, but I'll take the strike. He'll learn as he gets older that you never throw those strikes back. <laughs> in see, the six. See him shake his head there, and he put his finger in that thumb hole, and then he shook his head. Boy, it's a bad sign when a guy gets up on the approach, and he's shaking his head. Mm -hmm. Negative thoughts creeping in. Good shot, though. Leaves that four pin. Darrell averaged 208.3 en route to winning all nine matches. And oddly enough, he was the lowest average bowler of the televised finalists. Well, I was just going to say, Dan, it doesn't matter what you average in this kind of competition. You just have to win the matches. You know, it doesn't matter whether you win them 150 to 140 or 250 to 240. His closest match all week was a 228-226 win over Dave Wilk out of Upland, California, as he converts the spare. But basically, he just got ahead and stayed ahead throughout the entire week. Well, he's ahead in this match right now. Sam Soldo can take the lead with a double here, working on a strike. Right there, perfect. Beautiful shot. You know, I mentioned that uh, the Darrell averaged about 208 on the week. Dennis Samson was at 221.6, and his high game of the week was 276, so he did knock him down here at Samstown. He shot some big scores. We saw him in a very important match the other night. Shoot just, uh, you know, was trailing, and his opponent started up with four in a row, and he came back to shoot 240 and win that match. That's when he beat Brett Salder to solidify his position in the championship round. He beat him 249 and 233 and trailed throughout most of the match. And uh, looking for a turkey here in the championship game. And we're bowling for a quarter of a million dollars. And he likes the shot. Oh, ho, ho. tickle that seven out of there. Kind of got a break there. That wasn't his best shot, but he hit it right in the perfect place. And he gives it the stare down afterward. I think he probably grew up watching Marshall Holman. What about you? No comment. <laughs> There's his mom in the background. Uh, she has been very supportive all week long. Yeah, what the heck, what are moms for, right? Absolutely. Imagine she'll probably get a nice present one way or another, huh? Daryl now trailing, must respond to the pressure here. Boy, he's just lost, and he right through the nose. He's Brooklyn last time on this lane, now through the nose. It was high in the first frame. Mike, all the years that you bowled on the PBA Tour and, and had to bowl out of the top seat position, it's it's a different kind of pressure, isn't it? Yeah, I never did very well at it either, Dan. I, I just didn't bowl real well from that top seat position too often. I did now and then. 
but uh, my record wasn't real good from there. The great Omar Anthony's record from the top seed wasn't real great. So, I mean, it's tough. You come in, the other guy's got a chance. He's already bowled two or three games. He knows the line. You don't. You're fishing. He's hot. You're cold. Takes a special kind of personality to come out and just be super aggressive then and come right on out and start throwing strikes. So you feel like that's the key to come out aggressive and don't uh, waste any time, even though that if that if Daryl would lose this game, he would get a chance to come back and, and bowl one more game for the title. Well, it's a different situation here than it is on the PBA Tour as he throws this one perfect oh, great right, shot in, there. right in the 1-3 pocket as he does have that thought in the back of his mind that he's got another game and that if he loses this match, there is a, a second chance, which we don't too often get in anything in life. Mm -mm. Meanwhile, Sam Sell realizes that he's on the razor's edge. If he doesn't win, there is no tomorrow. So it's a different mental approach right now. Mm -hmm. Working on three in a row, trying to make it four. Hits it hard again, gives it plenty of room, and oh, it's a cave-in on the right-hand lane. Well, Dennis gets a break there. I think he was praying to himself <laughs> right at that point, realizing he did get a break. Working on four in a row, can increase it to five in a row, heading into the ninth frame. There it is. Always be thankful when you get a break like that. Could really put the pressure on, almost to uh, take this one right off the sheet. Can increase it to 36 pins with a strike here. And he knocks that 10 pin out of there. Well, a key shot for Dennis Samsell, who continues to uh, grimace at the pins. And uh, right now, Daryl Ion out of Brooklyn, New York, finds himself in a world of trouble. Working on a strike, though. Going at a 203 pace right now, he's still potential 233 if he would strike all the way out. So he's got to have this one. High on this lane again. That's the baby split. He's in big trouble, Dan. He just has not looked comfortable at all on either lane, really. He's thrown a couple of good shots, but it's almost as if he, he doesn't really, he's not reading the reaction, not getting the reaction perhaps that he had throughout the week. Well, sometimes when you're not getting out of that thumb hole clean, it can make the reaction on the lane happen poorly for you. Yeah, and the other problem is when the guy's got a five-bagger against you, that thumb hole starts to change all sorts of sizes. And that just about does it right there. That leaves him with 171 in the ninth frame. The best he can get is 201. Samsell's going into 230 pace. He can open in the tenth frame and win, so we're going to have another match here. And meanwhile, Daryl Ian reaches for another bowling ball, Mike, so at this point, he's obviously conceding, perhaps, the first game of the championship round and saying, hey, I better make an adjustment with another ball. Well, this is a good opportunity for him. Hopefully, he can get a mark here so he can get a couple shots with it, and that's the way it always seems to go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you try yeah. a new ball, and you don't even get two shots with it. 2 8 10 and Daryl mumbles to himself, well, I think that's enough for that ball. We'll put that one back, <laughs> won't we? He goes back to the other ball. Let's see if he shoots at the spare or just practices for a strike right here. He's practicing for a strike. Now, that's the smart play. Got to figure out something because time is of the essence. Shoots 179, and that's not what he had hoped for. Well, Samson's been hot all along. He's just rolling over opponent after opponent. He keeps throwing strike after strike. It's hard to beat a man when he does that to you. Just love it when those pins start to spin around as they head off the deck. It means you're really rolling that ball nice and crisp. I used to play a little game when I would practice, and if I would could knock all the pins off the deck so there was none on the pin deck, I got two points. If I got a regular strike where there were some pins left on the pin deck, I got one. And if I didn't strike, I got minus two. That's a two-pointer right there. I know then, one thing. I'd have been pitching a shutout. And then you, you try and stay above zero is what you try and do. Yeah, that's an interesting little uh, trade bit. Well, Dennis Samzell has uh, stormed out to take game number one here. And so uh, Daryl Lyon's going to have to strap it on here in the second game, or he's going to lose from the top seed position. And it's so hard to do, Dan, when this guy's throwing strikes. And there was the fill, 257 to 179. And so the game for a quarter of a million dollars is coming up next.